What is going on my YouTube children's dad with a bike and we're coming at you today uh, I'm filming on a Friday you guys will probably see this uh, I think Monday is when it uploads or when I will be uploading it but we are going to get the bike inspected in the state of Texas that means that it this thing is uh, for me is a year old officially so I figured what I would do is I'd take this time while we're getting this inspected and all that other jazz and give you guys kind of my, uh, I don't know, review of what this thing's been like to own for a year. So we'll pull off, we'll do a walkover of the whole bike. I'll highlight the modifications and stuff that I've made. I'll try to talk to why I made them. Um, what my thoughts are about the bike when I first pulled it off the lot to what they are today um, and hopefully something that may help you decide whether or not this is really you know the bike for you if you're out looking for that Indian Scout bobber so um, on that note stick around and uh, we'll get to this review there is a couple of service announcements I'd like to make or I guess uh, statements whatever the case may be uh, number one is if you're interested in some of the pictures and stuff like that that I'm taking when I'm out on my trips um, go check out my Instagram that is dad with a bike on Instagram pretty easy to find me uh, so follow me and you'll see all the things that I post I do more than just motorcycles that's my general here's what I'm doing in my life kind of uh, Instagram so go check that out also if you notice this shirt I'm wearing, Motorcycle Missions, um, go check them out. Now they, they're not pushing this video, they're not you know doing anything with me. I just donate to them uh, because I believe what they do. They're a veteran-centric organization that does a lot of work with veterans, kind of help with PTSD, and they do bike builds and a whole bunch of stuff with uh, with veterans that are kind of dealing with you know the. Uh, inner demons and whatnot that come from combat etc um, but they're a pretty good organization go check them out and donate anyway um, we'll be back in a minute well bam there she is my 2019 Indian Scout bobber and I did a whole video about why I unbobber the bobber which you know I'll link but we'll talk about that as well when we talk about the one year of ownership thing because I think that's important for people who are considering this bike or looking for a bike with comfort etc anyway we'll get to that so the modifications that I've kind of made to this thing kind of start to finish um, are Memphis Shades fairing I pulled off the uh, original front end cowl replaced it with a fairing and um, that was largely for comfort purposes um, I run a set of 8 inch handlebars again that's for comfort I replaced the grips with ODI Vans um, and that again is for comfort they're very tacky um, grips and uh, you know no vibration so uh, again for, for my personal comfort uh, replace the stock uh, controls with uh, Joker machines. Um, stock, they call them that kind of brushed silver um, kind of look. And I like this black dot look, so swap those out. Going on down the bike, I got my Dean Speed crash bars. Um, I've got this custom war bonnet that was made for me by a guy um, on the Facebook group for Indian. Um, bobber so thanks for that one replace the exhaust this is Vans and Hines uh, slash cut slip-ons uh, they have a great exhaust note you guys usually hear it when I'm recording um, but they're fantastic sounding exhaust uh, replaced the seat with uh, a saddleman and we'll talk about that because we're gonna break this down into comfort I do have the Indian uh, rack I, I ride solo and it's a great place for me to put just kind of stuff uh, I have a Dean Speed Sissy Bar, and we'll talk about a little bit why I kind of put that Sissy Bar on there as well. Uh, I have Dean Speed License Plate Bracket, 
and then I have a Dean Speed pulley cover here as well that's all for aesthetic purposes there's no, no purpose for them other than aesthetics uh, but I've got a lot of stuff on here from Dean Speed and um, let's see what else oh uh, and shocks I took off the uh, standard shocks and replace them with progressive 444s again for comfort um, you can't see um, but it's in there is I have a Trask performance intake in here and underneath the seat I have a tier 1 tuner so we're gonna break this down and when we break this down we're gonna talk about um, we're gonna talk about comfort performance handling and kind of usability and I'll give it the usability spin on mine oh and the last one we'll throw in there is uh, uh, maintenance so those five things we'll talk about so uh, let's get to it alright so when we talk about this, we're going to start off talking about comfort because that's the biggest negative this bike has is its comfort. And you know, sadly, you can't really. I mean, you you get a little hint of it when you go do a ah run squirrel uh, when you do when you do a demo. But the bad thing about demos is you don't actually get to ride for that long, so you don't get to really feel. Um, you know what that bike is really going to be like uh, you know to own and really in that 20 or 30 minutes whatever you end up doing a demo for you typically only get to see the good sides you don't really start to feel the bad stuff uh, so one recommendation I would make is if you plan on doing any kind of uh, purchasing of a bike you know find a place that does bike rentals and try to rent that bike it's pretty cheap to rent a bike for a day Indian has rental places um, throughout the US you can actually go rent from Indian you could rent this bike uh, well not my bike but a bike like this for a day and it's like either it's 98 bucks or it's hundred and one dollars for a day so um, that's a worthy investment if you're gonna go spend some time and you know uh, kind of demo a bike that you ultimately may buy so now that I've got that bit of public service out of the way um, let's actually talk uh, about my first day on the bike so I bought the bike you know a year ago and the uh, I was excited when I bought it and I did a demo ride of it you know of the bike there and I you know I, I thought well, you know the seats kind of hard bars put me in a weird position but everything else about the bike I liked and I thought well ah, you know those are all fixable and uh, but boy I didn't really realize how bad the comfort was um, so when I pulled it off a lot and I went home I had an hour and a half drive home and that stock seat good god it was like you know riding on a brick so you know the very first thing that I did was start thinking about what on earth can I do to make this thing more comfortable and so I kind of started going down that path so when we talk about ownership of this thing from a comfort perspective initially off a lot the comfort sucks it is not a comfortable motorcycle like at all um, but you know the good thing is is all of that can be fixed because the other aspects that's nice the other aspects of this uh, bike are just total amazeballs. So fixing comfort is an easy thing to do. And really what got me from you know comfort issues on the bike was the seat. It was the handlebar position. I probably could have lived with the handlebars, um, but I also didn't really like the way they look, so I knew I was gonna change those out anyway. Um, so for me, the way I ride, I spend a lot of times, you know, on the back roads, kind of twisty in and out. I do get on the freeways and stuff because I do take kind of longer rides and I do have to crunch some miles. So because of that, 
I really need to change, needed to change the comfort of this bike drastically. Um, now there'll be people that say, well, then you shouldn't have got that bike. Well, you know, I am, I am lucky in that my wife lets me have a motorcycle. I am unlucky in that I can't have two. <laughs> Because if I had to, then yeah, that'd be true. I'd have like this bar hopper, bobber looking thing. Uh, and then, you know, I'd have something that, uh, you know, let me get out and just chew on the miles. But this is what we have right now. And what I have in front of me right now is this bobber. So I have to make these changes. So comfort, right? I'm kind of battling about it, but in order for to make for me to make this bike what I needed it to be, which is, um, you know, I needed to be able to enjoy short rides, getting out in the hill country and like doing quick rips through the twisties, um, putting around downtown, uh, commuting and long rides. So, you know, that was the, the goal of this bike or, or what I needed to be able to do with this bike. So I made these comfort changes. Um, so fix the comfort by Windscreen which pulls the wind off my chest that windscreen does a fantastic job at that Handlebars put me up a little bit in my riding position gives me a, a, a more comfortable natural neutral riding position The grips save my grip strength my grip life my hands so I don't cramp when I ride they're super tacky So they help a lot and the seat of course saves my butt because the saddleman seats very comfortable um, lots of people make that first uh, change when they buy this bike is they rip that seat off and they go buy a new one and you know they either have the saddleman or they grab the um, Indian comfort seat which is new or a Corbin or a Mustang lots of options so uh, you know I immediately had to change the comfort so you know from a grade perspective um, you know let's do you know on a scale of you know five comfort on this thing gets like a one it's horrible but you can turn it into a five pretty easily um, oh and the other thing I did to address my comfort was the shocks the standard shocks on this bike are horrible even when I have the sag set properly um, it's kind of bad what is this yahoo doing anyway so comfort sucks if you're going to spend any money on this bike that's where you're going to spend the most is making it comfortable so you're talking seat handlebars grips you know fairing if you're a fairing kind of guy and uh and shocks and you know these progressive 444s i put on they uh they do the job for me make it comfortable they soak up the bumps so I've fixed comfort so let's talk about uh, um, the next topic which is performance hands down this bike is amazing when it comes to performance you know the engine is powerful it revs high it's a water-cooled engine so you get the benefits of being able to kind of get up there in the RPMs it's got a plenty of low down torque so five out of five for performance and if you could go over a five out of five when you go in and add the performance upgrades to it like an intake a tune and an exhaust this thing is is crazy powerful um, so I can't you know give Indian accolades enough on the power of this bike bueno 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 best thing about this bike hands down is its power performance super awesome so we're we won't talk too much about that because it's already great if you want to make it better you know go throw some stuff on and um, you'll turn it into a uh, a beast of a machine the uh, other thing that we can kind of talk about though is handling so um, the bike off the showroom floor at least the 2019 anyway uh, came with uh, kendas and they were these kind of chunky looking tires they look cool they performed okay 
but they weren't the best. Uh, so, you know, from a handling perspective, they were okay. And the bike itself has a uh, pretty limited lean angle. It's a 29 degree lean angle. So it's, you're gonna, you know, very quickly get to a point where you drag peg. It's just gonna happen. So, you know, as long as you're okay with that, it has a lot of give, you know, left to right when you start dragging peg. So you've got more room to lean. Um, you just gotta be okay with that. But, you know, the handling of it is still great. And, you know, when I hit about my 5,000 mile mark, the, uh, the Kendas were done. So I ripped the Kendas off and I put on Cruise Techs. And um, those are some amazing tires. The Cruise Techs are, are awesome. And, you know, they've done nothing but make handling even better. So we talk about like the, the lean angle thing. You know, it is an issue you're just gonna have to deal with if you want this bike, but it is not that big of an issue. Um, but because of that, you know, from a handling perspective, you know, I'll give this thing a, you know, probably a three and a half, maybe four out of five. But you can easily drag peg, there you go. So I guess let's talk about uh, overall, you know, maintenance and upkeep and all that stuff, because it's a big part of ownership, especially after you've owned it for a year. And to be honest with you, I have had to do nothing to this bike outside of just follow the, you know, maintenance requirements that are, you know, in the uh, in the owner's manual. And there's very little to do. I mean, the great thing about this bike is, you know, after that 500 mile uh, break in, you know, you're not changing the oil again until 10,000 miles. And I didn't believe it at first, so I was very skeptical. Skeptical, um, and I mean, I was always checking the oil, making sure it was good. And still to this day, it's, you know, 7,000 miles. Uh, it, it's good. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> okay. And knock on wood, but the, uh, you know, the overall quality of this thing from a maintenance ownership perspective has been fantastic. I've had zero engine problems. I've had zero electric problems. I've had, you know, nothing wrong with this bike. So Indian has done a fantastic job with the overall quality and fitment of the bike itself. Everything is done super well. So, you know, um, from, you know, an owner who's like, well, I don't really want to mess with the bike too much. You know, I just kind of want to want to ride it and enjoy it. This is a perfect bike for that because there is so little you have to do to this thing to, uh, you know, keep it happy. You know, put, put gas in it and do the inspections and the lube when it's required. And man, I think this thing's going to last forever. Um, and you did a really, really, really good job with you know this whole thing. You can tell they spent a lot of time making sure they got the design of this this platform right. So hats off to Indian. Um, you know this thing has been super easy to own. To own. Um, so I figure now maybe what we'll do is we'll talk about you know well if you like the bike so much why make all those changes and I did this video you know like I said earlier where I talked about unbobbering the bobber and I ride this thing for a lot of situations a lot of occasions so you know like with every other bike you know motorcycle owner they take that bike and they make it their own and that's what I did with this thing um, and I think you know that's one of the awesome selling points of the Indian Scout Bobber is that you can take that base platform and you can make this thing whatever you want. There are some people that have taken it and have done like the extreme bobberization of this bike. You know, they've taken off the rear fender, they've closed off the rear end. Um, there is just so many cool modifications that people have done 
um, to uh, to their bike. Man, what the heck? <laughs> so I think that's one of the you know great selling points of this bike is man you can you can take this and do all kinds of stuff to it and really really turn it into you know your dream bike or exactly what you want which is what I did so now you know after a year of ownership I've got the bike that I really want and I will own this bike for a long time and it's highly likely I'll never get rid of it um, and you know maybe I'll be luckily enough and you know my wife will come along one day and say yeah you can have another one and when that time comes and I can have another one you better believe that it is going to be an Indian uh, I'm sold on Indian I'm an Indian rider for life now I think I can't say enough about you know the company um, and, and their bike especially this bike so after one year of ownership 7,000 miles in the bucket I'm gonna give this bike a four four and a half out of five it's been a joy to own it's been easy to modify it's easy to work on hardly any maintenance required and you know the community out there at large for Indian uh, is is there to help you so you know you join the Facebook forum or the Facebook group you join the Indian Riders forum and they are a helpful uh, solid bunch of people so to that end I'm gonna close it out and tell you guys if this is the kind of bike you're looking for if you're looking for that mid-size cruiser where you can easily modify has lots of power look no further than the Indian Scout Bobber and with that I will leave you and you all have an awesome day stay safe peace